Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Lake Helen United Church of Christ virtual worship service. It's so nice to have you with us all this morning. Announcements for today. The book club is meeting on Zoom on Wednesday the 28th to discuss the book Summer of 69. On Friday the 30th, Cindy Casey will be leading the scripture and prayer meeting at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Saturday the 31st is a busy day for the Lake Helen United Church of Christ. The pictures of baskets are due to Raymond Arroyo that day, so get your pictures in. There will be a gift and go on the church, uh, no, on the parish house porch for the food pantry at the United Methodist Church outside the Gates Food Pantry. And the Advent devotionals will be available that day for $5. So if you signed up for one, you can get your Advent devotional when you bring food for the food pantry. And we will also be taking uh, an offering, a special offering that day for neighbors in need. Uh, if you have any questions about any of these events, you can see the bulletin board for more information. Let's worship. Sing to the Lord and praise God's name. Tell of God's saving power from day to day. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before God, all the earth.
Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 1 through 10 New Revised Standard Version Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ Grace to you and peace We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love in steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all of the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak of it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reflections on 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 1 through 10 by Catherine Matthews. These introductory words to Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians are probably the oldest words in the New Testament. That statement might startle many folks who assume that the Gospels were written first and then Paul went around sharing them with the churches that he planted. Scholars generally agree that Paul's letters are the earliest of the writings that we have from the very first Christians. As such, they prove invaluable insights into the life of the early church. Paul begins his letter with affirmation of the deep faith and exemplary spirit of the Thessalonians who get it that faith isn't just saying that they accept certain intellectual statements. He affirms the work that they do because they embrace the gospel, their everyday living out of its message. Paul also affirms their endurance and steadfast hope in the face of opposition and persecution by a surrounding culture that has no use for the fringe movements that undermine the program of the empire. Thessalonica is a Roman city, and there were many benefits of being one of those. Security, prosperity, enjoyment of the good life, as long as one was willing to go along with the imperial program to accept Caesar as Lord and not some humble Jewish teacher who had been executed by that same empire. John Dominic Crossan has written extensively about this conflict between the gospel and empire as the good news was received in cities and villages across the Mediterranean in those first centuries of Christianity. 2,000 years later, we may think that we live in very different circumstances, far away from the Roman Empire and its demands and allegiances. But we would be mistaken, for our pharaohs and emperors are alive and well in the systems and values that claim our allegiance and even our whole lives. In the myths of consumerism, materialism, nationalism, rampant greed and self-centeredness, we too struggle with just who is Lord. Crossens also writes that by focusing on those beautiful and familiar words, grace and peace, which Paul uses so often in his letters, that we may think they are simply conventions like our use of warm regards or sincerely. On the contrary, in these two words, we find the core of Paul's message and mission, faith and theology. The usual salutation in a Greek letter was cheris, or greeting, but in a novel, clever, and profound wordplay, 
Paul switches that to the similar sounding but theologically more significant term, caris, or grace, or free gift. Crossan writes in his book, In Search of Paul, that while Paul affirms the call of the people of Thessalonica and all Christians, it is a call to share this free gift with the world that God loves, for it is a free gift that God offers peace to everyone, everywhere. The Thessalonians long ago shared our own struggle to live the gospel faithfully, day in and day out, in every circumstance. Crossan expresses this beautifully when he discusses Paul's meaning of the word love, or better, of sharing, because the life of the community, the assembly, is about a love that is expressed as sharing, but from want to want, rather than from plenty to plenty. Crossan notes, and this may be hard for us to hear, that we should not give out of charity what we think is ours, but instead to see ourselves as participating in divinely distributive justice, a necessary sharing of God's stuff, because we are family and family share. Many of us may vividly remember our own parents telling us over and over about the requirement, the need, the call to share. If we are all children of God, then Croson's argument makes great and compelling sense. Could this be the truly countercultural message of a postmodern Christianity? This is the tension then for Christians today who want to grow into more faithful disciples of Jesus, in spite of the pressures in the surrounding culture and what it calls normal and right and even just. As Paul and all Christians look forward to the day of Jesus' return and a new creation, we might miss the new creation already happening in our midst because of Jesus Christ. Croson's asks then, what better deserves the title of a new creation than the abnormality of a shared world replacing the normalcy of a greed world? Amen. Please join your hearts and minds with me in prayer. Lord God, with gratitude for all your goodness, we come to you in prayer for our family and friends, for our sisters and brothers in faith, and for the world of nations you have made. We lift into your tender care those whose names are on our prayer list. Remember those who are dear to us, Wrap your steadfast love around them, sustain them in times of trouble, and keep them always in your care. Remember the Church of Jesus Christ. Empower us to proclaim the gospel, strengthen us in our conviction, and make us imitators of the Lord. Remember the family of nations. Send out your spirit to renew the earth. Welcome all people into your house and let your love be known in all the world. Holy God, you have made us in your image, and we belong to you alone. Therefore, we offer ourselves to you in service, love, and praise. Use us for the glory of your realm and the good of your people. To you, O God, maker of heaven and earth, through the power of the Holy Spirit, in the grace and peace of Christ we pray. Now God, hear our voices as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespassers, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Go forth to declare God's glory among all the nations, so that God's wonderful work may be known to all. Amen. Thank you for attending and viewing our virtual service. These are certainly strange times, and we have had to learn and do new things as we closed our doors to keep the congregation and community safe and healthy. But COVID-19 has not stopped Lake Helen UCC from being the church. We are the church from home. We are always here for you. There are several ways to find out what we are doing and how you can reach out to us in your time of need. Find out what we're doing through our website at lakehelen-ucc.com. That's lakehelen-ucc.com. Or on Facebook by putting in the search at Lake Helen UCC. That's the at sign at Lake Helen UCC. Our email address is Lake Helen UCC at CFL dot RR dot com. Again, Lake Helen UCC at cfl dot rr dot com. Our phone number is three eight six two one eight five nine seven six. That's three eight six two one eight five nine seven six. Thank you. Stay safe. Be blessed.